Scaling Political Memories. Everything in politics is about scaling the low-key focus, the environmental and historical memory. The president commands everything, as people have an ever shorter political memory. Even if engaged in politics at chattery level, they are liable to everyday manipulation that exploits all the possible cognitive biases to the march of reigning ignorance. We are not even capable of integrating random bits of data into a meaningful picture that we browsed on the web today for most of the part. To think critically is to build valid associations in a cross-disciplinary manner and derive correct conclusions from available data. The products of critical thought are coherent, intervalidated, continuous, concise, seamless and meaningful. They help make informed decisions and judgments about the world and to act likewise. The lack of proper training is a fact to pick high, as nowadays we are living in a spectacle of illusions, a theatron animatronic of surrogates of surrogates, dualisms within dualisms that bombastically yell, more is better, true is invalid. It's the majority that counts, not the downtrodden intellectuals that fight for the gasp of free air. In the end it is the greatest group that gets to elevate and sustain their lights and ideas no matter whether they were manipulated into this situation by social engineering or to the contrary via their own uniform motives. When we scale a political ideology or a political theory and research it from the perspective of history of ideas, it is always the effect that produces in societies, not the premise, that is important. Historically oriented real politics moves across the threads between sociology and depth sociology, sociology of ignorance and knowledge causal relationships in international politics, physics of entropy, philosophy of process, reality and transactions in the noosphere, the biopsychology of groups and individuals and in-group and out-group political psychology. That is what people have in their minds and how they interact on this basis. That is information management, distribution and its performative domain, the declared effects of cognitive and emotive behaviors that people undertake based on coherent or non-coherent reasoned or irrational ways. It is devoid of virtual action that is ineffective at bringing any change whatsoever. It is also the contentful action that effectively brings change about in the political landscape that differentiates virtualities from political citizenry. It is very important to zoom into history and zoom out for a grand view. It is very important to study a given epoch from its own perspective to understand it better. Wiggism is an attempt at redefining history from a current standpoint of knowledge. It errs all the time. The critical bias of all the current times is that we know better. The vector is moving towards the future. The principle of ancient times and days for that of looking backwards. The ancients knew better. The vector was sentimentally looking towards the past, even if searching for a more mythical golden age, a Saturnium Regnum of sorts. This presentism is doing concurrent damage with its futurism. We erase our roots even if we attempt to revive the ancient thought and virtue, a rare ethos we attempt to pick the lenses of the modern world. The frames of reference of historicity gives a lot of comparison. In the world of one psychiatrist, you can't measure consciousness with a consciousness. Likewise, you can't measure the present with the present. Only time will tell. That, I promise. Presentism has no insight, no consequence. It is a menace. It strategizes, but it does so in the loophole of its own time. It derives no far-reaching conclusions from the past. It is fatal at political prediction and damaging to the societal fabric. The revivalist schools of the right-wing spectrum are suffering from such presentism by pastism. The left-wing varieties are suffering from a myopic futurism within presentism. Once the logos of a culture, a civilization is dead, which is a fact, it requires a new one emerging on the ruins. The anti-transformative stage is emerging from the chaos of the now. The shaping of a new logos, the primal driving water is of prime importance, and as we know, it is extremely messy in the making. In majority, I see the world as narratives and strands of ideas that are fighting for primacy as clustered carrots, each with its own standard bearers, prophets, agendas, and agents. It is truly a battle for minds and hearts, but none is capable of setting the right degree or curse of action. In the Freudian principle of pleasure, the mind is setting for the nearest architecture of meaning, sense and belief to avoid pain and suffering of transformation. That was easy when the Logos was available. One agenda is totalitarian and ruins the nature of man. Tyrants are always detested for the contradicting natures of everyone who is not a tyrant himself, nor an agent of tyranny, and it is realized not on its way, but once it is installed. On the other hand, many agendas that breed chaos, alienation and confusion. The right measure requires continuous engagement of many agendas and fronts 
while being preemptively wary of disintegration of minds in an information group. Not when there is false society's passive in front of rising tyrannies and makes preventive measures to defeat and oppose tyranny or other pastime enterprise for intellectuals, while spiraling power oscillations get out of control, off to the arousal of crowds before it really happens. A globalized, interconnected world means flattening of these ideas and mixing them all up in a horrendous brew of a supermarketed preference-oriented advertisement. Those who command the dreams of others command their minds and hearts. Value-based, logos-driven societies were replaced by illusion and spectacle-based societies, who place the illusions, place the society's cars. That's why identity politics and charisma-based politics are so popular right now. Maybe the future generation will specialize in dealing dreams within dreams, thinking that freedom is merely an ability to dream those dreams, instead of knowing that what true ideas are and acting upon them. We are at the brink of an oneric age, whereupon majority will not distinguish the great sleep from reality. Virtual reality is slowly menacing above minds of many. It is not the technological virtual reality, but an oneric virtuality within the minds and hearts of millions, shifting from place to place, from toad to toad, as people are doing their offerings to the great gods of illusions.